Ladies and gentlemen, Hex community of all ages, hey, Jake Freedom here, coming to you live from YouTube for this week's Hex Update Saturday for April 25th, 2015. And is this the last update for this? It is the last update for this Saturday, or this month, and I forgot about the Primal Pack. Um, okay, so I'll tell you what, I'll make you a deal. Um, we'll, we'll skip the Primal Pack this Saturday, and we'll do it next Saturday. Um, if that's fair for you guys. Hopefully it is. Hopefully it is. I apologize. I completely forgot it was the last Saturday of the month. I should have known that because the VIP is going on. Oh, well. Whatever. No big deal. So, yeah. Starting off, we got the April VIP weekend. Everybody is uh, hopefully familiar with the VIP. This, this month's VIP tournament is going to be sealed. And finally, for the first time in a long time, it seems like, I'm actually going to be able to participate in this one. Um, it will be the, let's see, it'll be the one that starts tonight at uh, 6 p.m. Pacific Time, 8 Central. And you do the math, how to figure that one out. So hopefully, hopefully I do pretty well. We'll see how it goes. Um, it's always fun. Like I said, I haven't played in one of these tournaments and it seems like forever. I'm, I'm going to guess it's at least been two or three months or more. You know, I just, I, I'm not sure. I think the release celebration maybe was the last time I actually, put, no, there was something after that. I'm not sure what it was. Anyway, so yeah, uh, hopefully you guys are playing in that. If you are, hopefully you're doing well. Good luck to all who haven't joined yet or entered. Uh, hopefully you do well there and maybe you can get some of those uh, Gore Masters or the Succulent Cluckadon alternate art cards. Um, so outside of the VIP tournament, we're not, we didn't have much happen this week. We just have a uh, small article here that they talk about some um, some different uh, decks that they were building for the arena um, you know and you know some other I don't even know really what the hell they were talking about they were just they were just rambling here um, but the, the first part is talking about different PVE decks uh, for the arena and how they you know come out to build them and you know the different shards the different races etc um, and then we get down here and it says, um, the, who, who's ever talking here? And, and, and it's kind of funny because the guy names himself is uh, Phil Cape, which is kind of funny because you know, we have the Phil Cape. So it's kind of, it's kind of, I laughed when I read that for the first time. Um, so <clears throat> anyway, they were talking about, we'll, we'll just read some of it here. It says, um, uh, one of the things that we realized when making the arena was that random powers like Seaweed Behemoth's passive, when a champion gains a charge, there's a 25% chance he gains an additional charge. Um, those are great because PvE content is consumed on a mass scale. Even if it doesn't trigger in a specific game, uh, it will trigger in crazy ways in someone's game that leads to a mem memorable experience for that player. Additionally, this content was designed to be replayable and accessible to players with a wide array of skill levels. Uh, passive powers like this help the goal greatly. Uh, the experienced players will certainly be challenged to win when the behemoth's power triggers repeatedly, gifting him several extra charges. Um, that player remains engaged in part because he knows that the behemoth can be a massive challenge in any given scenario. On the other hand, players with less experience and or smaller collections don't feel hopeless going up against it. Um, there is a decent chance that the Behemoth passive power only helps the player ch player's champion and never helps Behemoth at all. Uh, and then they're going to say, just yesterday I lost him in a way that uh, that really highlights how explosive he can be. I had dropped him to one health, but he had stabilized behind Eternal Drifter, um, who received the, the charge power himself. If you're not familiar with Eternal Drifter, Eternal Drifter comes into play and he can play the charge powers. He gets a random charge power from a random champion. And you can use those on this card here um, without actually having to meet that threshold. Um, so he said, I was playing a ruby deck and was hoping to draw a direct damage action to finish the behemoth before he could kill me. The behemoth was empty-handed, but he drew the Talisman of Vitae. Um, for the turn and had enough resources to both play and activate it, his passive turn uh, turned those charges into more and... Uh, and Bellow of Brigadon made two enormous beasts. The Talisman put him back to 18 health. I died a few turns later. So like I said, they're just going through talking about different, you know, arena decks the, the, and the different champions that you can come up against there and how they, you know, needed to balance them out a little bit. Um, they don't really go into much balancing, but just different ways that they did that. 
Um, so they, what they have listed here is, uh, here's what Seaweed's Behemoth decks looks like. As I mentioned before, there are, um, these are pretty easy to change, so we will likely be tinkering with, uh, with them fairly regularly. Um, and what they mean by that is if they don't feel like, you know, that it's either too easy or if it's too, uh, too difficult to defeat the actual, the uh, champion, um, they can go ahead and tweak these decks, um, without you know, updating a patch, or no patches are going to be included or anything like that. They can just do it basically on the fly is what it sounds like. Um, so here's his deck. Um, it's got uh, the Bellow, uh, Brigadon, it's got Chlorophylia, Crackling Spout, Nature Rain, Spear Oracle, and Turbulence. Those are the wild cards there. In the Sapphire, we got Crackling Wit and Storm Cloud. And then for the artifacts, it's got Charge Hulk, Eternal Drifter, Inducto Copter Bot, uh, Pulse Reactor, Reactor Bot, and then the Talisman uh, of Vitae. Um, so this would be a pretty, pretty basic deck to build. It's not gonna cost a whole heck of a lot. I mean, there's, you got the Eternal Drifter is the only, is the only uh, legendary card in the deck there. And there's just a few rares. So one could probably build that pretty cheap. Maybe we'll, you know, see what this deck costs on the next uh, Hex Economics. And then for the shards, we have nine Wild, um, four a Shard of Instinct, and seven Sapphire, and then four Crackling Vortex. Um, so yeah, pretty pretty simple deck there, but um, again, you know, we'll, we'll maybe take a look at that deck there uh, in a future episode of Hex Economics. So yeah, that's basically um, it for this week here, other than, like I said, that VIP tournament that's going on. Um, you know, like I said, Good luck to all, and I will be playing in that in seven short hours. Well, currently my time is 1.06 p.m. Um, so let's get to the part where everybody is excited for, and that would be, let's open this week's pack and see what we can get. Like I said, next week we'll do the uh, we'll do the primal pack. Just I totally forgot this weekend um, or today and whatnot. So if I had enough platinum right now, I would go and do it, but I don't want to buy platinum, you know, wait for you guys, all that crap. So we'll just open up a regular pack. No big deal. I'm sure you don't, you don't care. All right. So what are we going to get here? Just a lousy rare. Hopefully it's a good rare. Maybe like Crackling Vortex. Uh, I like that one. I don't know why. All right. So for our commons, let's start out with Giant Mosquito, uh, Subterranean Spy, Rotting Buffalo, Cunning Skullcaster, Sly Huntress, uh, June. I can never pronounce this guy's name. If somebody wants to like put a pronunciation in the comments below, it'd be great. I'm just I just call him Junie Mirthkin because I don't know how to even pronounce that. So Junie Mirthkin, uh, Spam Bot, Crackling Sprout, Ridge Raider, Phoenix Guard Enforcer, Kill Blade of the Milky Eye. That rounds out our commons. And for our uncommons, we have Withering Touch. Electroid and Ashen Watcher. Um, Electroid is a pretty, you know, when you look at it, it's like, oh, wow, one cost three, four. Um, but, you know, when you read, it, read its card text, this can attack or block unless you control four or more dwarf and or robot troops, which isn't horrible because he counts himself as one. So you would only need three more. And so you can... Really, theoretically, <clears throat> you can have a 3-4 for 1 out on, you know, turn 3, maybe turn 2, you know, so it's, it's not, you know, out of the ordinary to get this guy out early for 1 there, but I'm going to say turn 3 at the, probably the earliest, I just don't see any possibility, possible way to do it on turn 2, because you lay this guy turn 1, turn 2, you lay like a dwarf, maybe have the charge powers, of, you know, to create a battle or a war bot, that'd be 3, so yeah, turn three would probably be the earliest. So um, not a bad card at all. And our rare this week is Shogoth. Shogoth. Eight casting cost three Sapphire Threshold. He is a Chaos Touch troop. He's a seven six unblockable. And his card text reads, uh, for a Threshold of three Sapphire and one resource, put two other cards and this all from your hand into your deck. Interrupt interrupt target card. This gets cost minus four <laughs> You understand that so basically what it says here is is um, 
if you want to use this ability here, it's going to cost you one resource. You're going to take two other cards from your hand, including this card here that's actually in play. And you're going to shuffle them into your deck and you can interrupt some type of card that the opponent is playing. Um, and then this gets, you know, once this gets shuffled back in, it comes back out. It's only going to be four. Um, so if you draw him again, he's going to be, you know, it's going to cost four. If you do that again, it's going to be zero. But, you know, for a cost of eight, you know, how many... How many times are you going to do that? I mean, that's basically, you know, nine costs, unless you can get this down somehow, which I don't know of any way really to reduce that. Um, so, I don't know if it's that great. Has anybody played this card? I know I haven't. You know, if you have, does it work? I, it just seems way too slow. Obviously, for Constructed, it's not, not going to work. So it's way too, uh, costs way too much. Um, maybe, I don't even see this working in draft. Maybe sealed. I don't know. Where does this fit? You know, where does this card fit here? So let me, you know, let me know there if you've played this card and whatnot. So that is this week's deck. Deck. Pack. So let me know your top five picks in the comments down below. If you want to let me know something else other than that, be sure to leave a comment. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And as always, if you want to see more Hex Update Saturdays, be sure to click subscribe down below. And we'll have another video for you soon.